students hope you are well and working hard to achieve your goals so as we had discussed the meaning and definition of entrepreneurship its characteristics and difference between entrepreneurship and intrapreneurship so today we will discuss our next concept that is enterprise its meaning and definition and steps in setting up an enterprise so first of all we will discuss some examples of an enterprises in india like the tata consultancy services tata groups or reliance industries hdfc bank mahindra groups icicic bank limited hindustan unilever limited itc wipro infosys bajaj hcl or godrej or jindal so these are some examples of enterprises that are successfully run in india and provides goods and services to their customers so now recently a 12th class student arjun started generic aadhar pharma store where he buys medicine from government approved manufacturing units and sells them 80% lower cost as compared to the market so we can say that it is an enterprise he started as the name generic aadhar so we can say that enterprise is a business or a company or an organization especially that will run in the market to provide goods and services to their customers so in this impressed with this ratan tata also invested in his enterprise so first of all we will discuss our key terms so first one is the interrelationship between entrepreneur entrepreneurship and enterprise so entrepreneur is the person who undertakes an enterprise and entrepreneurship is the process of launching an enterprise and then the enterprise is an outcome in the form of a company or business for example dhirubhai ambani and reliance company is an enterprise dhirubhai ambani is an entrepreneur and reliance company is called enterprise likewise anand mahindra mahindra group so an enterprise means the business organization formed to produce goods and services to consumers jobs to employees and to add the country's national income is called enterprise next is sole trader for example general store stationery shops bakeries so a person who carries business only for himself is called sole trader next one is partnership for example chartered accountancy firms architect firms these are some examples of partnership firms so when two or more persons jointly run a business and share profits equally is called partnership firms next our term is joint stock company for example reliance industries tata groups so a business which requires more capital is established under joint stock company form of organization so our first topic is enterprise enterprise means an undertaking or adventure that requires some innovation and investment and thus involves risk just as family is the basic unit of society so an enterprise is the basic unit of an economy so it obtains factors of production coordinates them converts them into something useful and provides it to the society so we can say that decision making coordination and risk bearing are the main functions of an enterprise next one is the characteristics of enterprise so an enterprise consists of people who work together for the purpose of making or selling a product or service into the market next is an enterprise may be a public or private large or small exists in order to produce a product or service that others consume and pay for it next is utilization of resources so an enterprise utilizes raw material energy space machinery and other inputs to produce or sell the products in the market next our characteristic is brings success so an enterprise is has to take appropriate actions to maintain and improve the success of an enterprise it makes the comparison between its cost and gains so that they can bring success in the business next one is continuing activity so it is not an ad hoc effort to produce a single pro- product 
but rather a continuous effort to produce a stream of products into the market next one is economic activity so an activity to produce something and in return gets money or wealth is called economic activity so these are all the characteristics of the enterprise so next our topic is steps in setting up an enterprise so an entrepreneur who wants to establish a new business enterprise has to take the following decisions so first one is selecting the line of business the first decision involved in setting up a new enterprise is to select the nature and the type of business the entrepreneur has to decide the line of business in terms of industrial trading or service then he has to select the types of goods and services he will produce or distribute also he has to consider the various factors like nature and sources of raw or material that is to be used types of technology to be used sources of supply and distribution policy then he has to decide or analyze or forecast the profitability position of the business on the basis of operating cost and sales revenue after that a market survey may be carried out to estimate these factors so marketing research may be carried out to determine the number location and needs of the customers then the product analysis is to be made to determine the design quality and style of the product so while selecting the line of business a number of factors must be kept in view so first factor is the expected rate of return so the expected rate of return must be fair keeping in view the risks involved and the amount of investment required in the enterprise secondly the degree of risk involved the degree of risk involved should be such that the entrepreneur is willing and able to undertake thirdly the line of business chosen must be technically feasible that is the requirements of finance technology skills labor and materials should be within the reach of the promoter so these are some points that is to be considered while selecting the line of business next is deciding size of the unit so determination of the size of the firm or scale of operations is an important decision in the establishment of a new enterprise so the entrepreneur should aim at the optimum size keeping in view the extent of the market technique of production nature of the product availability of finance competence of management so where the risks involved are high or the new idea is to be tried it is preferable to start with a small size and to expand the firm gradually so a careful analysis of technical managerial financial market and such other factors should be made to determine the size of the firm next our point is choosing the form of ownership so the choice of the form of ownership depends or determines on the basis of division of profits authority and liability of the owner continuity of the business and transferability of interest so a business enterprise may be organized in a three forms first is sole proprietorship then partnership and joint stock company so while selecting the ownership these are the three factors that is to be considered in mind so a good form of ownership should be easy to form simple to operate durable flexible and free from heavy taxation and legal formalities next is locating the appropriate site so the location of the business firm is an important decision as it influences the cost profitability and the growth of the enterprise moreover once the site is selected it is very difficult to change it an unfavorable location may restrict the growth of the firm and in addition to higher cost so the objective of location decision is to find out the optimum location so that per unit cost of production and distribution are the lowest possible so the location is a three stage process as it involves the selection of the region locality and site so first one is selection of the region 
so it is selected on the basis of assess of raw material and markets availability of labor transportation and banking facilities next is choice of locality and it is determined by local attitudes managerial preferences public facilities climatic conditions etc next is the selection of the site that depends on the cost of the land soil and surface and its cost next our point is financing the proposition so proper planning and control of finances is essential to assess or to get the success in business it involves advanced decisions on the basis of determination of total amount of capital required for the business so it involves cost of establishing the business means promotional expenses cost of fixed assets like land building plant machinery etc then it involves the cost of current assets like stock of raw material cash inventory etc then there is a decision to decide the sources of finance deciding the time price and method of marketable securities and then last is the administration of funds that is needed to control and manage the finance for a new business enterprise next is the provision of physical facilities so an important decision in launching a new enterprise is selection of machines equipments plant building and other physical facilities so the nature of the physical facilities depends upon the size of the firm nature of the business and the process of production and the availability of funds required in the business so in the selection of particular machine or equipment the cost of productivity availability of repairs maintenance services spare parts skills of workers are also to be considered in mind so next one is plant layout so after selecting the machinery and equipment it is necessary to arrange them in an efficient manner so the arrangement of physical facilities in the plant is called plant layout so the layout should be such that it results in the optimum utilization of machines equipment workforce and space so also in this machinery and equipment should be placed in a proper sequence so as to permit a smooth flow of materials the layout should also be flexible so as to adapt itself to the changing conditions of the business next is internal organization so another important decision in the establishment of a new business enterprise is the creation of an internal structure work is divided among departments like production marketing and finance and arrangements are made for coordination of these various departments so an efficient network of authority and responsibility relationship needs to be created for successful operations so internal organization is a structural framework consisting of authority responsibility relationships among the members of the enterprise so a sound internal organization facilitates efficient operations avoids duplication of work promotes mutual cooperation and coordination and facilitates expansion and growth of business next is acquiring the required human resources so the next step is to estimate the needs of people or employees to perform different jobs in the internal organization structure the forecasting of the number and the types of employees is known as human resource planning or manpower planning so after this it is required to the motivation of the required managers and the workers becomes necessary once the personnel are employed and placed on jobs they must be motivated to make their best possible contribution towards the fulfillment of objectives next is compliance with statutory requirements so the new enterprise must comply with all the statutory conditions such as registration licensing listing on one or more recognized stock exchange 
filling the prescribed documents, obtaining no objection certificate from the Pollution Control Board. These are some requirements that are needed for the establishment of new enterprise. So the last step is launching the enterprise. The completion of physical, organizational and financial aspects leads ultimately to the actual launching of the enterprise. So acquisition of required materials, machinery, mo money, workers and managerial ability are the functions performed at this stage. So these are the points that are needed for the establishment of new enterprise. So this is all about today's topic. You have to write the question answers. So your today's question is the setting up of an, a new business enterprise is in many ways like the birth of the child. Explain in this context the steps involved in starting a new business enterprise. So go through the various links and write the answer for this question.